Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on this channel where we continue the series on Tabber and today we will uh, show a demo of how to read data of an MQTT topic and then send them in parallel to two outputs namely the influxdb uh, output to save the data to a time series database but also a signal R output to send real-time updates to a browser uh, client. And of course, Dapper makes this uh, surprisingly easy uh, by taking uh, a lot of the responsibility of connecting to MQTT and Influx and SignalR out of your hands. Okay, let's see how you get this uh, example to work. First of all, you need to take a look uh, or need to start your uh, the different servers you're going to uh, to use. I chose to run these servers, so InfluxDB and MQTT on my local machine. So I use Docker for this. Here I have InfluxDB running, there I have MQTT uh, running. How do we start these services? Well, it's very simple. In the readme.md on my GitHub repo, you will be able to find it. So to start the InfluxDB server, I just run this command. And I run this command from a folder, an empty folder initially. Um, and then that folder will be used to write the InfluxDB uh, data uh, to it. So it's not written in the in the in the container uh, somewhere. Um, after you run this uh, InfluxDB server, you should navigate to localhost 9999 for the initial config, or you can specify your username, your password, but also as very important, an org and a bucket because you'll need that later in the configuration of the Influx component. Secondly, uh, to start the MQTT server, that's just a simple docker run command like the one you see highlighted over there. Uh, and that starts a server running uh, on port 1883. And I'm using a client application, GUI client application. There are also, of course, command line applications. Um, in this case, that's mqtt.fx. You can simply search for that on, uh, on Google or Bing. Uh, download the application and install it and in this case it was configured to connect to the server on localhost on port 1833 and I can use this application for example to publish messages to a topic in this case the topic is called influx and I can send a message that is properly formatted according to what this application expects and we'll see in a moment how that exactly works so that means the two servers are up and running now for SignalR to work, I also have to deploy a SignalR instance in the Azure cloud. I'm not showing that here, it's pretty simple. In the Azure portal, you type in, in the search bar SignalR and you create your SignalR instance. Good. Now for Dapper to be able to work with these three different systems, you need uh, components to be defined. So there's a YAML for our InfluxDB uh, component. Be aware, this is not part of the default Dapper. It's some custom code I've written. You can see that on uh, in other videos on my channel. And in this case, the component I've written expects uh, a couple of uh, metadata values. For instance, it expects the URL, which is my InfluxDB on localhost 9999, a token to connect to InfluxDB, and then the org and the bucket that I talked about earlier. To create the token, you will need to go to localhost 9999. In the data uh, section, there's a tokens uh, option. There you can select generate read write token and then select, for example, I'd like a scope token to read and write to the bucket I'm going to use. When you have the token, you can just click on the uh, token here and then copy the token to the clipboard. And then you reuse that token within our influx YAML file, right? For MQTT, it's simpler, just the bindings MQTT type that you can see over here, and then the URL, which is localhost 1883, and the topic I'm interested in, the topic in this case is influx. Then for SignalR, it is a default component part of Dapper, bindings.azure.signalR is the type, it requires two pieces of metadata, a connection string, which you can find in the keys section of your SignalR uh, instance in the cloud, in the Azure portal, and then a hub. It says optional here, but it isn't. The hub is called Influx, 
and that's also how our client uh, will have to be configured will have to be configured to listen for messages uh, coming into the influx hub you'll see in a moment how that is done so these are our components then this is the actual application as you know already if you have an input component dapper is responsible for retrieving the data and then when there's input it will do a post to a route with the name of the input component as the route name so in this case we have the mqtt route or mqtt component which is called mqtt that means the route has to be called mqtt as well and it's a post route when dapper is doing this post it will send the data it picks up from the mqtt topic as the request body so what you see over here this data yeah, that will be inside the request body and that will be json it's json because of the fact that we use body parser dot json here as middleware in express right now i expect in the json that there is a room and a temperature field i'm not doing extensive error handling here we just expect that if the room contains spaces we replace them by underscores that's fine and then we build a, a message here now before we go into the details of the message i'm going to show you how we can send the data to both influx and also and that's quite important signal r and i see that something was wrong here all right that's it signal r so what dapper can do is when you have an input binding and you have a method in this case the post that uh, works on the input binding you can actually do uh, a an, an, uh, response body and if the response body is formatted in this way what you'll see here so we send this in the response we're actually telling dapper uh, look um, when you find this kind of response you will have to send some data to both the influx component and the signal r uh, component or to the output uh, bindings we will do this in parallel and the message you send or the data the json that you send to those uh, two output bindings will be message now of course these two output bindings influx and signal r they expect different data the influx component uh, actually expects this it expects measurements tags and values right uh, now because it's just using an interface in uh, in go uh, it, will, it will parse everything. It will also get target and arguments, but it won't do anything with it. So as long as message contains measurement tags and values, the influx component will work. Similarly for signal R, the signal R component expects a target and arguments. Uh, although it will also uh, get the measurement, the tags and the values, it will just disregard those. So I can send the same message to both outputs and both outputs well should work properly and let's actually test that out right so let's go to our uh, application here let's exit the application because it was still running uh, and let's run it so we of course have to use dapper run we give it an app id our app is listening on port 3000 dapper needs to know this because it needs to do a post to that application on port 3000 um, and of course the components path we override the default components path to specify our own components folder that contains our three yaml files when we start this application these components will be initialized properly and i i'm not checking the logs i know they're initialized properly in this case and it's just waiting for data to be sent on the mqtt topic now let's take a look what data that we are going to send well i'm going to send some data it will be very clear uh, that it will be a low amount of degrees there 10 uh, degrees when i'm doing publish here it should be sent to both influx db but also signal r now let's make sure we can see the uh, signal r client here uh, i'm not discussing in detail the signal r client but here you have a client application it's just javascript it's using uh, view as well but it doesn't really matter uh, this one is also using an intermediary azure function to properly connect to the azure signal r hub in the in the cloud so whenever we send data via the signal r output binding that's going to the signal r hub in the cloud this application should pick it up and do something with it to visualize it so let's see if this works we're going to click on publish here 
and when we do publish you can clearly see that yeah the room small room is being sent and uh, 10 degrees if i'm doing a big room in the big room it is 20 degrees well no problem uh, 20 degrees in the big room this will appear as well in our signal r climb that's working which means that the the output we do here so the output to signal r of our message well it clearly picks up the target and the uh, and the arguments and that's done that's working that's that, that's 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 okay now let's check out if we have our influx uh, db data as well we should of course so let's go to explore and see if we can find in our measurement temperature for our big room and our small room let's see what values that we get and let's go to a table view here and we can see indeed that for the small room we had we had some values earlier already but the last one i sent was for 10 degrees celsius well here for the big room uh, that i sent the last message it was 20 degrees celsius here so the values ended up in influx db as well which means that indeed this uh, response uh, body uh, where we say send the data to influx as well and send this message well measurement tags and values were properly used to send the data to influx db so what you have seen in this uh, example is uh, pretty simple we're using the the power of dapper and the different input and output bindings to create yeah let's be honest very simple application very small application a couple of lines that actually says look we're going to use dapper to connect to mqtt whenever we get a message on the topic we're going to uh, simultaneously in parallel send out a message to our output bindings in this case influx and signal r again do note that the mqtt and the signal r binding are part of dapper the influx db binding is not part of dapper that's something that i created myself see in a little video about that so I hope you found this interesting that you can see what you can do with Dapper and the different bindings. And yeah, let's uh, see you another time. Bye bye.